Today, I thought I'd talk about comedy because I just watched a stand-up. It was the Dave Chappelle's newest stand-up. And I watch quite a bit of YouTube and I hear a lot how Dave Chappelle is the greatest, one of the greatest comedians ever. And I've just watched his latest stand-up and I've watched his past two as well. And I, I understand he's a great storyteller. Dave Chappelle is an absolutely fantastic storyteller. And when it comes to skit comedy, i.e. making a little skit, um, as he used to do for his shows, um, which I've only ever seen on YouTube because it wasn't a big thing in the UK, I, I don't understand why people think going to a comedy show, a supposed comedy show, and listen to a person tell stories, and then in an hour you laugh five times. I think I laughed five times in this last stand-up, which was an hour long, five times. Is that really going to a comedy show? Is that really a stand-up comedian? Now, I might be totally wrong. I really might be totally wrong. But when I go to a stand-up, I want my belly hurting. I really do. I want to laugh at jokes being thrown at me, but in a good way. Now, I understand there are storytellers in the stand-up comedian world, but Dave Chappelle jokes are... Few and far between. Most of it's just chatting. And I don't, I don't, if I want to watch somebody chat, I'll turn on a podcast. Do you know? Very odd. So then you have Joe Rogan. Now, Joe Rogan, a lot of people would say, is not a funny com- stand up comedian. But when you watch his stand up show on Netflix, because I've never seen him live, but when you watch his stand up shows, He goes from joke to joke, and whether, I don't know, let's say 60% of his jokes are pants, 40% of his jokes are quite funny, and you will laugh at them. So when I watch a Joe Rogan special, I'm laughing a longer amount of time than I am for the Dave Chappelle I've just watched. It goes, the same goes for Ricky Gervais. Now, Ricky Gervais has always been a funny guy. But again, only certain jokes of his hits. He's he's turned into more of a, I want to offend someone so that my special can sell. I'll put this one offensive joke online. Netflix will promote this one special joke, this one offensive joke, and everybody will watch it. I'll get a bit of backlash for a couple of minutes but he really doesn't care because he's in the higher echelons of society so later on in his career now Ricky Gervais I don't find him funny I really don't he's he's so far up his own ass I just don't I just I just don't like I just don't like his comedy his tv shows are absolutely brilliant it doesn't matter what that you uh, some he's calls comedy but they're just not comedy they're literally drama but he thinks it's called comedy because he's in it when it's not, it's drama. Like his last thing on Netflix, I can't even remember the name of it. Um, but it wasn't, it was not funny in the slightest. It was a drama. Um, but it was okay. He, he directs well and, he, he, you know, he makes good TV shows. Then we get to people like Lee Evans, probably one of the greatest British comedians ever. Now, he would make your belly laugh. I remember watching his stand up as a kid and just absolutely <laughs> i think my draw balls dropped watching his comedy because he was that funny but he's not funny because of his jokes well yeah he is but he's funny because of his phys- phys- physicality as well absolutely top tier comedian and that's the kind of thing i'd want if i went and watched a stand up show even when you watch him on dvd he just makes you laugh the same as him is uh, peter k peter k is the same and then when I'm thinking and going through these comedian, British comedians that I find hilarious, because there is a lot of them. I, I, there's some British comedians like Frankie Boyle. He's an absolute hit. But you can't deny the guy's a genius when it comes to stand-up. His stand-up is absolutely brilliant. Um, what's that young lady? Uh, young, there's a young lady called uh, Sarah Milligan. Her stand-up, absolutely wonderful. She's a a, a Geordie lass. Americans probably wouldn't understand her, but she is absolutely fantastic. She makes you laugh, joke to joke. But on the same note, she can tell a story. But they're not drawn-out stories, they're just little stories. And you get an, an instant 
laugh. Now, Britain creates a lot of comedians. I mean a lot. But they don't seem to have the same punch as American comedians. Now, all I hear on the internet, all I hear when I see American comedians like, um, I don't know, Andrew Schultz, who's the new, new, newer comedian on the internet nowadays, or you hear Joe Rogan or Bill Burr, any of these comedians in America, all you ever hear them say is, such and such a person is the greatest in the world. Such an, Eddie Murphy, greatest comedian ever in the world. It's always in the world. They never look past their own shores. And that really gets my goat. And it really does grind my gears. Because there are comedians in this country that would... All them comedians that hang around with Joe Rogan at the moment. There are comedians in this country that would blow them out of the water from this country. Absolutely blow them out of the water. Yeah, it really would. And it just surprises me that more British comedians don't make it in America as stand-up comedians. I mean, you have your outliers like um, Eddie Izzard, you obviously your uh, uh, Ricky Gervais. But bar that, Russell Brand maybe, he's made it in America. I know Jimmy Carr goes over there, but I don't think he's, he's broke America. I really don't. Um, I don't even find Jim... I literally... You know when they talk about gatekeepers as such? Well, it's not gatekeeping. But you have Joe Rogan, who, on the internet, in America, if you're a comedian, if Joe Rogan finds you funny, he'll promote, you know, he'll do his thing, and you end up getting where you're going. Well, in the UK, the guy that does that similar thing, but he does it through TV instead, is Jimmy Carr. Now, Jimmy Carr, I don't find funny at all. He's just a horrible comedian. Now he's fast with his one-liners and blah, blah, blah. And you may laugh at some of them, but in a, on a whole, as a stand-up comedian, I don't like him. His TV work is brilliant, he's, but he's always the host and he always has young comedians around him that he's, he's trying to... He, I don't know whether it's him doing it or... But, but it always looks the same because he has about seven TV shows and he's the one always trying to bring up these breakthrough comedians. And if you're not in that circle... You're never, you're not, you're never going to make it to TV. I think even Russell Howard came up through Jimmy Carr, you know, going on these TV shows. Um, do you know what? I wonder how many there is. I, I could honestly say there is lots of them. There really is. Joe Lysett, Shepardock, Chris Sandy, Sean Locke, Sean Locke, God bless him, rest in peace. And he kind of, he kind of holds the Rod Gilbert. No, he's Welsh. He's funny. Uh, Miranda Hart, I think she's been... She came up through TV shows. Not under Jimmy Carr, but I think she's been on some of his shows. But Jimmy Jimmy Carr seems to be like this leader of comedians when it comes to TV shows. Like a click. And they do it through TV on British TV. But then Joe Rogan does it on the internet. Same, similar thing. It's very odd, that. But to my point was, the fact is... I just, I don't understand why more British comedians don't make it in America as comedians. It's very odd. Because when you watch American comedians, let's pick a comedian, Bill Burr. Now, when Bill Burr picks a subject, tell a story on, he usually makes it an international joke, you know, or an international subject. Whereas in England, the subject is usually very British orientated so i can understand in that sense why it wouldn't work in america but the other day i saw andrew schultz put out a trailer for him doing stand-up and he was touring and it showed you where he was going and he was in liverpool and he was making liverpudlian jokes now i guarantee andrew schultz knows nothing about liverpool but he must have done some really good hard work and read up about it and it's just very the world of stand-up is very complicated mm. makes you wonder though doesn't it it really does i mean lee evans i know that he did a few hollywood films he was in the fifth element what was that movie he made with the uh, young uh, american chap mouse trap the mouse trap mouse yeah i think it was the mouse trap that house haunted by a well not haunted but um had a mouse in it that was uh a pain in the backside. Um, 
Who else has been big in America? Well, Eze, Eddie Izzard, um, massive in America. And he's been in loads of movies. He's been in, I can't even list how many he's been in. So he's made it in America. But they see people, the British comedians seem to make it in America in in TV or movies. They never make it as greats. Very odd. Michael McIntyre. Dear Lord, God help us. Ross Noble. He's one of those crazy comedians that you literally don't know where his show's going. I see a lot of people, a lot, a lot of Americans on the internet love Al Murray. Um, they love how educated he is. Um, Jason Manford, Salford lad. Uh, I watched one of his, I think I watched his last stand up and it was just after COVID or just before COVID. Wasn't very good. Uh, Stuart Lee. He was, he was quite big in the 90s, Stuart Lee. I did like him then. I've not seen much of him since. I know he probably has done lots of work in the early 2000s, but I've not seen much of him. Roy Chubby Brown. I always used to love him growing up. He was like somebody who'd get over hold of a Roy Chubby Brown video. You knew you were in for a, 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 a blue treat, if you know what I mean. Absolutely hilarious. Uh, who else was funny? Billy Connolly, great Scottish comedian. He was a legend. Jasper Carrot. Um, controversial today, but the old uh, Jim Davison, he was funny in his time in the early late, early 80s. Got a lot of stick for a few of his characters, but, you know, everybody found it funny in them days. And I was just wondering, because I'd watched Dave Chappelle's special, and I just thought it was a bit, if I wanted to watch a story, read, listen to a story, I'd watch a podcast or listen to an audio book. I've literally listened to an audio book which had more jokes in it than Dave Chappelle uh, special. I think it tells like six. I'm I'm sure he reels off about six stories. Each one's got a punchline, but two of them don't land for me, and then maybe four I'll laugh at. So anyway, I was disappointed. I just thought I'd have a chat about stand up in general, and I wondered why British comedians don't make it in America when British comedians are more. I find that British comedians are more joke after joke after joke after joke after joke, make you laugh constantly, where American comedians seem to be, I'm telling you a story, listen to me, I'm telling you a story, here's a punchline, I'm telling you a story, here's a punchline. It's a very big difference. It's a good one, you know. We're all different. But that's video for today, and I will uh, see you next time. Leave a comment, tell me who you think's funny.